Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video I am doing a tutorial on how to install Windows NT 4.0 in VirtualBox. Now, this is an updated tutorial here, I had done one back in 2015 or 16, can't quite exactly remember what date, um, but this is going to be an updated tutorial on getting that installed. We'll also be installing uh, the Service Pack uh, 6 add on to it there and also showing you how to get uh, the sound to work on it as well. Um, so all of the links will be in the description for what you're going to need for this uh, version of Windows and as well as VirtualBox. So of course VirtualBox will be in the description. Um, you can download it for your specified operating system there and then as well as uh, the actual um, that's the service pack that we'll be using. Um, but here, the first link, or the second link, I should say, will be for the NT 4.0 uh, ISO, the install ISO, which in this one, it includes service pack one. Um, but then the third link in the description is going to be a upgrade ISO to service pack, uh, which is considered 6A. Um, so that will also be in the description uh, for you to download as well. Um, once you get all those downloaded there, uh, that will be all you will need for this uh, video um, and for this operating system file. So we'll go ahead and open up VirtualBox and we're going to create a new virtual machine. And in this case, I'm just going to call it Windows NT 4.0. Um, should automatically select the version as Windows NT 4. If it does not, you can hit the drop down in here and select Windows NT 4. And then we will go ahead and hit next. And it's going to ask you the amount of RAM to assign it, uh, the default 128 megabytes. So um, I'm just going to leave it at the default. Um, you can bump it up as you wish for any experimental purposes. And we'll hit next. It's going to ask us to create our virtual hard disk. So we'll go ahead and create that. And you can choose your specified file type you'd like. I'm just going to leave it at VDI, hit next. And then dynamically allocated is usually what I select. You can also do fixed size. So it actually takes up the space that you assign it hit next and then this is where you'll actually create the capacity of the drive. Uh, normally I just leave it at the default of two gigs um, which is what I would recommend you doing as well but uh, certainly if you do want to experiment around with it you can increase it as needed. Um, but once you got the size you want go ahead and hit create and it will create your virtual machine and um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of drag it up here but uh, there's our machine Windows NT 4.0 so what we'll do is uh, with that highlighted uh, we'll go ahead and into the settings here and then we'll go to storage and then in this empty disk here of course this is where you're going to enter in your ISO file so we'll hit the disk and you'll want to choose for the ISO um, find where you have it saved and um, I did end up renaming it here so for me it's called Windows NT 4.0 but it will be uh, named differently for you there uh, so we'll ent uh, enter that into the disk we'll go ahead and hit ok that will submit it in for that and then now we will go ahead and start the virtual machine and it's going to bring up virtual machines going to bring us up to the windows nt setup blue screen here and you will get this uh microsoft windows n version 4.0 build 1381 and here is the first uh message that it comes up of the welcome to setup so to start off, we'll hit enter to proceed, uh, enter one more time to proceed, and then it's gonna ask us to continue by hitting C. And then on this, this is the license agreement page. Uh, so go ahead and just hit the page down key. Um, I just hold it down so I can scroll it all the way to the bottom quickly, and then hit F8 to agree. Uh, leave all these as is uh, and hit enter to confirm those. And then it's going to have us go ahead and uh, hit enter to install on that hard drive and we're going to format using the NTFS file system so uh, make sure that is highlighted and hit enter and then it's going to ask um, where you want to have these installed just leave it at the default hit enter and then hit enter one more time it's going to do a examine of the disk and then it's going to copy the files which should go fairly quickly but of course depends on the hardware and that portion of the setup has completed so on this stage, we'll go ahead and uh, go down to the disk or right click and remove the disk from the virtual drive since it does ask us to do so here. Um, and then we will hit enter to do a restart. 
and then it should automatically boot into the next portion of the setup for Windows NT Workstation 4.0. Uh, it'll come up with that message up top again describing the operating system. Um, it will say the file system is the FAT, but then uh, it will do a convert over to NTFS here on that. So um, that may pop up originally to start this portion off um, when you hit this blue green. So um, now it'll pop us up into the graphical interface portion of the setup. So uh, and now we'll go ahead and enter the uh, disk back in. So right click where the disk was there. It's now grayed out. And then it should be in your list here. Uh, if you do need to hit choose a disk file to browse for it again for any reason, you can. But it should be right on the top of the list here. Um, so I put that back in and then hit OK. And it will bring you up to this first setup screen. So on this, we'll hit Next. We'll just leave it at the typical installation. Hit Next. This is where you can type in uh, your name and organization. Uh, for fun, I just type in uh, my name and my channel name for the organization. And we'll hit Next. And I'm just going to call this computer NT4. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, once you got that assigned, hit next. Um, you can skip this by hitting next, or you can enter a password if you'd like. On the emergency repair disk step here, you will want to uh, make sure no is selected for that. Go ahead and hit next. Um, leave install the most common components recommended as the highlighted option. Hit next. And then hit next to start the installing of networking. Um, so it should automatically say we'll participate on a wired network. Just leave that as is, hit next. You can start a search. It's just gonna find a random uh, ethernet adapter here. It could be this same one. Uh, just hit next. Uh, leave TCP IP protocol checked, hit next. Hit next one more time. If this message comes up here at all, just hit continue. And then um, it's gonna ask you wanna use DHCP, hit yes. And then we'll hit next to start the network and it will complete the networking portion of this installation. It's gonna to ask to connect to a work group or domain. Uh, it'll confirm your computer name as well. Should automatically have work group highlighted with all caps work group in the description there. Leave that as is, hit next, and then hit finish. And it's gonna go through some other portions of the setup. And then we'll come up with the date time properties here. So you can certainly go ahead and make sure to enter in your specific uh, time zone as is. Um, and then if you hit date and time, it's just going to confirm today's date for me is the 26th at the time of recording this and the time, um, obviously will differ when you do install it. So hit close, uh, it's going to come up with display properties window. So we'll hit okay on that. Um, you can technically bump this up to 800 by 600 if you want to, uh, when you hit okay, uh, it's going to have you actually test it. So hit test and hit okay. If you do bump it up. It'll run through the graphic test here. And then once that's done, it's going to come up with a message here that uh, asks if you did see the bitmap properly. Now, um, if you do run into a glitch here too, where the mouse uh, starts to go off the screen, um, you can go in, if you hit right control to get out of it, you can go up to inputs and uh, mouse integration should be disabled by default. But um, if that happens, just do a right control um, and then click back into it and then should go back to normal there for you. So hit OK on those and, and then OK on that prompt to close that out. And then it's going to do some more configuring and uh, setting up. And we'll finish that up and it will say it's installed successfully. So um, we'll hop out of the machine there. We'll right click on the disk in the bottom right here and remove it. And then we'll go ahead and click restart computer in the box there. So restart our virtual machine. It'll give us the option to load into the uh, NT 4.0 operating system. And there's an option for VGA mode. Just do the top one, should already be highlighted, hit enter. It's going to load that up here. And of course, come up with that version information. And here is the logon screen. So um, for this, we'll need to go up to the inputs, go to keyboard and then in the control alt delete, and then should hit okay to log into the default administrator account and it will bring us to the welcome page here. So we've successfully finished the main install portion of NT 4.0. Uh, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to actually install service pack six along with this. For that, we will need to uh, go down to the disk in the bottom right here, do a right click, hit choose a disk file, and then you will need to locate where the uh, service pack six 
disk is. Should be called nt4sp6a.iso. So we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, insert that into the operating system here. It's going to come up with a uh, information message here. Uh, actually, it loads up in Internet Explorer. Um, these are basically the uh, release notes for it. So close out of that. Um, if you hit my computer and go into this, um, so if you actually do the install and you do it for install on the base systems here, do the install, so Intel based systems, and then it will go through the install here once you proceed through that. And it will say it is complete. So um, you can go ahead and remove the disk and do a restart. Pop behind there, there we go, hit restart, and it will restart our virtual machine here. And then again, we'll hit enter to enter into the thing. Uh, the OS loader will now say version 4.01, and the information up top should say build 1381 service pack six for NT version 4.0 now. And that should confirm that you've got it installed properly. And it will finish loading that up here. And then uh, we can go ahead and log back into the operating system. Again, going up to input, keyboard, and insert control alt delete. And then if you click OK to log in. And it will log us into the operating system here. Um, you can uncheck this to have it so it doesn't start up, uh, show it startup every time. And so now if you go ahead and confirm that it's installed, if you go right click on uh, properties, uh, so it'll show the version here. Um, you can also do uh, WinVer and it will show this message here that it has service pack six in, on this. So revised service pack six a. And so that means that it is installed successfully there. Uh, the next thing we'll need to install here is uh, guest edition. So you can go up to devices and hit insert guest edition CD image. And uh, it should automatically come up with the setup screen. If not, you can go into my computer and double click on your D drive here and it should open it up. Um, but on the main screen, we'll just hit next, uh, hit next one more time. And then uh, it should have everything defaultly checked there. So we'll hit install and it will begin installing everything for guest editions. Should go fairly quickly there. And then um, it will say it has been completed and we'll need to reboot. So it will perform a reboot here. And uh, sometimes the shutdowns and reboots do take a little bit of time. Um, shouldn't be too long here before it does end up actually fully going through that reboot. And there it is. And again, we'll hit enter to load it up into the operating system on the bootloader there. And we'll come up with the login screen again. And as you can see, it is also in uh, 256 color um, with installing guest editions. So uh, that helps with getting that on there. Uh, when you install guest editions, that will give you the 256 colors uh, for that. So again, we'll go ahead and hit keyboard, insert control delete, and we'll hit okay to log on to the account. And uh, we'll pop up a display properties here and you can actually change the resolution. And for me, it goes all the way up to 2560 by 1024. Um, for me, I'm just gonna bump it up to uh, 1400 by 1050. Um, and you can see it is in 256 colors. So we will hit okay on that. And then uh, the last thing is, is we still do not have sound. However, we can go ahead and get that installed uh, by going to start settings and control panel. And then uh, on here, we will need to go into multimedia. And then in multimedia, we go to the devices um, tab on the top here. And then we'll hit add. And then on here, there should be one that says Creative Labs Sound Blaster 1X Pro 16. That's the one you want to select. Go ahead and hit OK. And um, you do need to make sure that you have the NT the main NT 4.0 disc inserted for that. 
Um, so if that comes up, just make sure you do a right click on that. Uh, it might pop up with that window, just close out of it. Um, but make sure the NT 4.0 is back inserted for this step and then hit OK. On this uh, IO address, go ahead and leave it at 220, hit continue. And then the only setting you will need to change on this page is at the very bottom where it says MPU 401 IO address. Change this from 330 to disable. Uh, hit OK. And then it's going to ask us to reboot. So it'll go ahead and do a reboot here. And again, there are times when it does these reboots where on the shutdown portion, it does take a little bit longer. Um, so just let it load while it does the saving of changes to the hard disk and it will reboot your machine. Um, and of course, this can happen there if you do leave the disk open. So go ahead and go remove it and then you can do another reset of the machine and it should take you to the bootloader. So we'll hit enter and that will load us up into the operating system here. And in theory, once we log into the user account, we should be hearing the startup and shutdown sounds. Um, so we're on the beginning screen here. So we'll go to do a insert control alt delete and hit okay. And you can see we did have the startup sound play there. Um, and we can also confirm the shutdown sound play here. Um, sometimes it does not have it enabled by default. Uh, so if your control panel is open there, you go back into control panel, go to sounds. Um, in this case, uh, does an NT 4.0 have it enabled? Um, and you can confirm it does work if you just start. Uh, and you can do a close all programs and log out. and it will play the uh, shutdown sound there for you. So um, yeah, uh, that will conclude the tutorial here. Uh, we'll log back in just to show the desktop and it will play the startup sound again there, of course, when we log back in. So uh, with that all being said, that does conclude my uh, tutorial here on how to install Windows NT 4.0 in VirtualBox. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, certainly, if this did help you out in any way, or if you did enjoy watching the video, certainly leave a like down below. Um, I'm starting to like doing these uh, more full in-depth tutorials where we get some of these extras installed, like in this case where we've had Service Pack 6 installed, and we make sure that the graphics are updated and also that we get sound working. So um, that kind of gives you the full experience there. Um, when you do the installs this way um, and you can also hear some of the older startup and shutdown sounds um, also ironically internet actually is feeding through to this it's of course not going to load the web pages correctly but that also is interesting that that works so um but yeah again if this did ass uh, assist or help in any way uh, leave a like down below if you have any future video ideas certainly leave a comment down below and if you are not already subscribed, uh, certainly can do so by subscribing down below and hitting the bell notification uh, to be notified whenever I upload a video. So again, this concludes my video tutorial on how to install Windows NT 4.0. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.